Storage in the cloud is very convenient. You do not have to install the servers. You do not have to maintain them. Scalability is at the click of a button. And so, as you might imagine, it is very popular. Now, one of the most popular databases is that of MongoDB, and they offer a hosted service, which you can use, as you can see here, in a number of minutes, and you get half of a gigabyte of storage. Now, for many prototypes and exploration, this is more than enough. Also, you should know that you can run it locally if you happen to like this quite a bit and you want to install it in your lab on some bigger machine and not pay for the service. The code is open source and it is freely available to download. Now, let's go ahead and walk through some of the basics. We will create the basic entry onto the database and then we will read those documents back. So let me go ahead and close this window here and show you the folder that I will be working from here. As you can see, it is 07 underscore MongoDB. And let me navigate to the same place within the file system here. We'll enter 07 and move to the file system. And as you can see there, I have the same files. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the first one. I can do that by entering code 00. You can also just drag and drop onto the folder itself. Now note here that I am using an NPM package called MongoDB, and this is the driver that sets up all of the right configuration in order for you to reach out and connect to these uh, to this hosted servers in this case. You could do the exact same thing if you were running your own database within your own server by using this client and setting up the right connection string. You can see there the connection string. Obviously, you would need to replace this with your own username and your own password. And that is part of the setup that you would go through if you use the hosted free service or if you set up the database yourself. The rest of it is just the configuration that is required for this package that connects to the database. Now within the client.connect, we're going to create a database. As you can see there, we're going to create a table. We're then going to create a document and add this document to the collection, as you will see. The collection is, you can map it onto tables within the relational world. So I'm going to go ahead and write this code in here in this, in this space. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the comments. And I'm gonna start off here by creating the database. And we do that by entering client.db and entering the name of our database. In this case, I'm going to enter documents. If this database already exists, it will simply get a handle on this database. If it does not exist, then it will create it. I'm then going to create a collection. The same thing is true for the collection. If the collection already exists, you will get a handle on the collection. If not, it will create it. So let's go ahead and enter collection. Then we can enter db.collection. And we are going to enter the name of this collection, which will be documents in this case. We're then going to create a document that we're going to push into this collection. We'll use the name of documents, and then we will create our object. And we'll simply create a user type of object. And we'll enter Peter here for a name. Uh, we will enter the email of Peter, Peter at mit.edu, and we will give him an age of 18. Actually, let's change these up a bit just because I've used that example before. And when we connect to the database, we'll see a different one. So let's enter Bruce uh, and let's enter here Bruce as the names that we will be using. Now we can go ahead and use the collection that we created uh, in line seven. And we are going to insert, and this is again part of the of the package and you can see here that we get uh, autocomplete and we're going to go ahead and insert one that takes a document. I'm gonna go ahead here and enter document. 
and then it takes a callback and the function takes two parameters that is an error that you can handle and a response and I'm going to write the rest of the function here I'm going to ignore the error handling for the demonstration and I'm going to write to the console here and I'm going to uh, write the response let's see what comes back from the database I'm then going to clean up and enter uh, close the connection so I'm going to enter client.close save my file and then I'm going to pause and replace the connection string because it does not have my credentials uh, and those will be blurred from now on just to since I will post this to YouTube so that I'm not posting my credentials out to the world okay I've gone ahead and pasted in my credentials I'm only gonna make one small change here I don't want the database and the collection to be called the same so I'm going to call this one test and then documents so I'm gonna go ahead and save this I'm gonna to move to the terminal and there I'm going to install my dependencies which will bring in the package that I am requiring and that has been installed now let's go ahead and run this code I'm going to go ahead and enter node and the file name is 00. Let's go ahead and run that. And as you can see there, that went through. And we can go ahead and confirm it in a moment when we write the code for reading those documents back. So let me go ahead and drag and drop that file now. File that is called 02 underscore get all docs.js. And as you can see there, the first part is the boilerplate that uses the package to establish that connection. And within the comments, we're going to write our code to reach out, make the connection, and bring those files or those entries back. Just as before, we need to get a handle on the database and the collection. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste those. And then I'm going to go ahead and enter the code to be able to make that query. So collection.find, and in this case, we're going to make an entry, an empty entry that will bring back all the documents. There you can be more specific about your query. Uh, then we're going to use to array function, and it takes two parameters. The first one is the error, just as before. The second one is the docs coming back. I'm then going to write the result to the console and I'm going to enter here docs. I'm now going to go ahead and terminate that line and write and close the connection to the database, which in this case is client.close. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And just as before, I'm going to go ahead and change my query string. I'm going to do that now or sorry, my connection string. And now that I've saved that, I'm going to move to the terminal and I'm going to go ahead and run that file. That's 02. And let's go see if that works. Yes, as you can see there, we get a bunch of documents back. Some of them documents that I've written before. And the last one, which is Bruce, Bruce at MIT.edu and the age of 58. Now, to be able to get more of the functionality, dig into the documentation, and I will provide this code to you uh, with the rest of the examples that you see there uh, so that you can play uh, with this code. As I mentioned, for scalability, for performance, this is one of the go-to database packages. It's open source, so that means there is no licensing that you need to pay, and it is widely used and also has commercial support in case that's something that is important.